Hi friends, now we can discuss the marginal conditions of Pareto optimality. Pareto in his criterion states that any change that makes any individual better off without making others worse off is an improvement in social welfare. And the society is said to be reached at optimum level that is Pareto optimality or Pareto efficiency when it is impossible to make anyone better off without making any others worse off. Further, Pareto concluded from his criterion that the competition will lead the society into the optimum position. He did not give any mathematical proof for that. Later, Lerner and Hicks derived the marginal conditions which must be fulfilled for the attainment of Pareto optimum level. These marginal conditions are based on certain assumptions. They are, number one, each individual has his own ordinal utility function and possess a definite amount of each product and factor. Number two, production function of Every firm and state of technology is given and constant. Number three, goods are perfectly divisible. Number four, the producer tries to produce a given output with the least cost combination of factors. Number five, every individual tries to maximize his satisfaction. Number six, every individual purchases some quantity of all goods and number seven all factors of production are perfectly mobile based on these assumptions we can explain the marginal conditions which are the first order conditions required for the attainment of Pareto optimum the three marginal conditions developed by Leonard and Hicks are number one the optimum distribution of products among the consumers that is efficiency in exchange number two optimum allocation of factors that is efficiency in production number three efficiency in the composition of output that is efficiency in the product mix the first condition is the optimum distribution of products among the consumers or efficiency in exchange. Efficiency in exchange is said to be reached when the consumers secure maximum satisfaction by consuming the commodities. This condition says that or the consumers will get maximum satisfaction when the marginal rate of substitution between any two goods must be same for every individual who consumes them both. Marginal rate of substitution of one good for another is the amount of one good necessary to compensate for the loss of a marginal unit of another to maintain constant level of satisfaction. The slope of indifference curve shows the marginal rate of substitution. We can explain the efficiency in exchange with the help of an Edgeworth box diagram. In the diagram, we can show Two commodities X and Y, preference of two individuals, individual A and individual B. The preference of the first consumer is shown with the help of indifference curves A1, A2, A3, A4 and A5. Similarly, the preference of second individual is shown with the help of the indifference curve B1, B2, B3, B4 and B5. By joining the 
tangency points of the indifference curve, we will get the Edgeworth contract curve of exchange. On Edgeworth contract curve of exchange, the slopes of isocon, the slopes of indifference curves are equal. That is, marginal rate of substitution between two commodities among the consumers or between these two individuals are same. For example, the point A, B, C and D indicates the points where marginal rate of substitution of X for Y of individual A equal to marginal rate of substitution of commodity X for Y of individual B. But the points outside to the contract curve are inefficient points. Suppose, for example, Z is the initial point. We assume that Z is the initial point, which is the intersecting points of two indifference curves. Therefore, the slope is slopes of indifference curve are not equal at point Z and it is not the point of efficiency or maximum satisfaction. It is because when we move from the point Z to C or Z to D, the welfare increases. For example, while moving from point Z to point C, the first individual A remains the same indifference curve A3, while the individual B reaches a higher indifference curve B3. That is, individual B better off while individual A not worse off. That is an improvement in welfare as per the Pareto optimality criterion. Similarly, a movement from point Z to point D also indicates improvement in welfare because at the point D, the individual B remains at the same indifference curve while individual A reaches at a higher indifference curve A4. Thus, A becomes better off while B not worse off, which indicates the improvement in welfare. Thus, every point on the contract curve represents equality of marginal rate of substitution of commodity X for commodity Y and therefore they are efficient points. Thus, the marginal condition for a Pareto optimal or efficient distribution of commodities among consumers requires that the marginal rate of substitution between the goods be equal for all consumers. Now we can discuss the second marginal condition that is optimum allocation of factors which implies efficiency in the production. Production is said to be at efficient level when maximum output is produced by using the given resources. Efficiency of production is said to be reached when it is impossible to increase the output of one good without decreasing the output of another by a reallocation of the available factors of production. The efficiency will be achieved when marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital must be the same for any two firms producing two different products by using the same factors, labor and capital. And marginal rate of technical substitution is simply the slope of ISO coins. Now we can discuss or we can explain the second marginal condition or efficiency in the production with the help of the Edgeworth box diagram. Here production function is shown with the help of ISO coins. Here also two producers producing 
commodities X and commodities Y respectively. And two factors are used, that is labor and capital. And the production function of the first producer is shown with the help of the ISO coins X1, X2, X3, X4 and X5. Similarly, the production function of the second producer is shown with the help of the ISO coins Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4 and Y5. By connecting the in, uh, tangency points of isoquins, where slope, slope of isoquins are equal, we will get the edgeworth contract curve of production. On every points on the edgeworth contract curve of production, the slopes of isoquins are equal. Thus, the margin, second marginal condition is satisfied on each and every point on the production contract curve. But the, but the outside points like Z, the slope is not equal and therefore Z is an example of inefficient point. All points outside to the contract curve are inefficient points. We can prove this. For example, suppose the initial level of production is at Z. Z is the intersection point of isoquins X3 and Y2, where slopes are not equal. So, while moving from Z to point C, we can notice that the production of X remains the same, that is shown by the isoquins X3 at point C also, while the production of Y increased to Y3. At point C, Y3 level of Y is produced. That is, at point C, <coughs> the producer Y, that is the second producer, better off while the first producer not worse off. Thus, it is an improvement in welfare. The production of Y is increased without decrease in the production of X. Thus, at point C, the welfare is increased. Similarly, a movement from Z to D also indicate improvement in welfare because <laughs> at point D, the production of X has increased and reaches at the ISO coin the X4, higher level of production, while the production of Y remains the same ISO coin the Y2. Thus, at point D, the second producer better off, that is, production of X has increased, while the first produce, uh, the producer Y is not worse off, that is, it remains at Y2 itself. Thus, the points, every point, on the contract curve shows the efficient points where the slopes of isoquins are equal. Thus, we can conclude the second mar marginal condition that for a Pareto optimal allocation of factors, the marginal rate of transformation Marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital be equal for all commodities produced by different firms. When two commodities X and Y are produced by using two factors labor and capital, then the condition states that marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital for producing X will be equal to marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital for producing Y. Now we can discuss the third marginal condition that is efficiency in the composition of output. To define the third marginal condition of Pareto optimality, 
we use the production possibility curve which can be derived from the edgeworth contract curve of production production possibility curve can derive from the edgeworth contract curve of production by mapping its points on a graph on which the axis measures the axis measure the quantities of final commodities x and y the slope of ppc production possibility curve is the marginal rate of product transformation which shows the amount of y amount of commodity y that must be sacrificed in order to obtain an additional unit of commodity x that is the rate at which one good is transferred to another the third condition for a pareto optimal or efficient composition of output requires that the marginal rate of product transformation between any two commodities must be equal to marginal rate of substitution between the same two goods that is marginal rate of product transformation between the commodities x and y will be equal to marginal rate of substitution between the commodities x and y for a that will be equal to the marginal rate of substitution between commodities x and y of b this marginal condition is related to the technical conditions of production and the state of consumers preferences here efficiency in production as well as efficiency in exchange are coincided both are matched which is the overall conditions of pareto optimality thus we can conclude that pareto optimal state in the economy can be attained if the three marginal conditions are fulfilled they are number 1 the marginal rate of substitution between commodities x and y be equal for all consumers number 2 marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital be equal in the production of all commodities then third condition is the marginal rate of product transformation between commodities x and y be equal to the marginal rate of substitution between the same commodities x and y for any two goods <coughs> thus by fulfilling this through three conditions pareto optimality can be fulfilled now a situation may be pareto optimal without maximizing social welfare however welfare maximization is attained only at a situation that is pareto optimal that means all points on the contract curve represents the optimum point and the points outside the contract curve are inefficient points so the welfare maximization is attained only at a situation that is pareto optimal now we can conclude here thank you